Okay, so we just worked out the derivative of the sine function and we found, um, perhaps to our surprise, hopefully to our delight, um, that the result gives you cosine, right? Um, so what if we had started with, what if we started with g of x equals cos x? What do you get if you start with cosine and go the other way? Okay, well, let's see. g prime of x will be the limit h goes to 0, cos of x plus h minus cos of x over h. And we have a trig identity here as well. It's cos x cos h minus sine x sine h minus this remaining cos x all over h. So once again, we group terms. Um, I'll speed things up a little bit this time. So there's going to be a cos x term, and there's going to be a sine x term. And let's see, what do we get? So cosine is going to be multiplied by this limit. Limit h going to 0, so we have cos x times cos h minus cos x times 1. So minus 1 over h. And what about sine? Well, here's sine, sine h over h. Ah, but minus sine out front. So maybe we shouldn't have put a plus sign. We should put a minus sign. And then we have the limit h going to 0, sine of h over h. And just like last time, this limit is 0, this limit is 1, and we have our answer. The derivative of cosine, well, it's not quite sine. It's negative sine. Okay, so another fairly nice result aside from that minus sign, and believe me, that, that minus sign is probably going to be giving you headaches for the rest of the semester, um, but there's not much we can do about it. It's there. It's the right answer. We just have to remember where it goes.